my name is Reverend Donna Maurer. I'm the spiritual leader of Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living in Amato, Arizona. I'm here on YouTube with our music director, Heather O'Day, and Ruth Bennett, who is our practitioner of the day. We thank you for sharing your time with us. And now I ask Heather to ring the bells that begin our service. Hello. My name is Heather O'Day and I'm the music director at the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living. Let's begin this morning's service by ringing bells and celebration. Hello, and welcome to the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living. We are so glad you're joining us today. My name is Ruth Bennett, and I am your practitioner for today. Wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are truly welcome here. While we may not be meeting in person, we know that we are all of one heart and one mind, and that there is no separation. If you would like, please settle into your seat, close your eyes, take a deep breath while I speak our invocation. As we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the words of truth from Reverend Donna, we are already experiencing the health the wholeness, the joy, the abundance, and the love that are always available to us. This service unfolds in its perfection, each of us receiving the spiritual nourishment we need right now. We are all blessings, and we are all blessed. We anchor these truths together as we say, and so it is. Thank you, Ruth. This is the last week of our song by Sue Riley and Richard McDesey, Who You Really Are. Well, I know who you really are. I see it in your eyes. Oh, you are a shining star. I know who you really are Well, I know who you're here to be I see it in your eyes A light for the world to see I know who you're here to be You're here to be the one you're here to make it fun You've really got my head spinning You brighten every room You always leave too soon And this is just the beginning well, I know who you really are I see it in your eyes are a shining star I know who you really are You are incredible So unforgettable The one that everyone's eyeing You are an awesome friend And so magnificent And there is just no denying I see it in your eyes Oh, you are a shining star I know who you really are I know who you're here to be I see it in your eyes I know 
who you're here to be. I know who you're here to be. Thank you, Heather. We're concluding two months of Sandbox Wisdom, where our topics have been sparked by the one-liners of Cynthia Copeland Lewis's children in a little book called Really Important Stuff My Kids Have Taught Me. Well, I feel that we're all experiencing this pandemic in our own way, but in many cases, we are starved for the hugs that we enjoyed at our center. We long to invite people over for a cookout. We would love a great game of Mahjong wearing a mask every time we leave our house, though an absolute necessity, brings home the fact that we are faced with an invisible en enemy. And that causes stress that we may not even be aware of. So I've chosen these lighthearted topics because I hope it, that they bring a smile. But I also want to deliver a message that is important, especially now. So today I've chosen use the fancy soap as my topic. And when I told Ruth what my subject was, she laughed and said that when she went through her mother's things, she found a box of fancy soap that had never been used. And that made me think about the many times I or friends and family members have saved some gift or precious possession, waiting for the perfect time to use it. In fact, at our Coffee with the Rev Zoom meeting this past Monday, I told about my former husband who had purchased a very expensive shirt. He was Argentinian and we were setting up a Spanish ad agency and we put an ad in a local trade paper. And he received a call from the executive director of the International Vision, Division of Max Factor wanting to set up a meeting with him. So as he was dressing for that meeting, I asked him about his beautiful shirt. And he replied, well, I'm saving it for something important. And I replied, what could be more important than a meeting with the executive director of Max Factor? Well, he wore the shirt <laughs> and he did get the account. But it reminds me of another story. Even I had a friend who grew up in poverty. Um, and so she was always worried about lack and limitation. For her birthday, someone gave her an expensive bottle of perfume. And like my former husband, she decided to save it for that special occasion. She saved it for years. And when she finally did have the perfect reason to use it, when she opened the bottle, the perfume was rancid. There's a law of divine circulation that tells us when we freely use the gifts we are given with gratitude, then we open up a divine flow so that good continues in a circle going out from us and coming back to us. Dennis Merritt Jones in The Art of Being writes, herein lies the paradox. If you want more of whatever it is you desire, you have to first prove to the universe that you are capable of having it by developing a consciousness that affirms there is no shortage of it. The only way to do this is by creating a vacuum or space for it to be received. And the only way you can create a space for it to be received is by letting go of what you do have, trusting that the universe knows what it is doing. That's the law of circulation in action. To people enmeshed in fear of not enough, this logic will make no sense at all. So they cling and hoard which simply broadcasts a message to the universe that they lack and to which it responds, let me help you prove it. To a person who's established in a conscious awareness of his or her unity with the source of all good, it can be no clearer. Letting go is a prerequisite for receiving. And we can do this more easily when we trust the principle of abundance and the law of circulation. So our little girl is right to use the fancy soap to keep our good in circulation. When we hoard the good stuff, the rose-shaped soap, the shirt, the perfume, what are we telling ourselves? Aren't we giving ourselves the message at some level that we don't deserve it, 
that we're not worthy of it. And since the universe can only say yes to the consciousness we hold, it returns our lack consciousness with more lack. And that's a law we can't change. We can change only our thinking so that the universe is saying yes to our consciousness of abundance and our belief that we are worthy of that abundance. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, says, Spirit, which is the creative life principle, is forever flowing through us. But we have been given the power or right to impede or stop its progress in ourselves. We know we can tie a cord tightly around our arm and so inhibit the circulation of blood that congestion, stagnation, and infection will follow. In a like manner, through our thinking processes, our ideas and convictions, we use the tourniquets of negative thoughts and block the flow of the creative life through us. When I first found this teaching, I had a lot of relearning to do. I had grown up in a middle-class household with a dad who fought depression most of his life and a mom who felt like she didn't quite get the life she wanted. There was a lot of lack and limitation thinking that I inherited from the time I was little. As a young adult, I moved to Los Angeles to start my own journey. And not too soon after my move, I found our teaching through Founders Church of Religious Science and the wonderful ministry of Dr. William Hornaday. I enrolled in classes and one of them was about having a consciousness of abundance and prosperity. And the assignment was to personally put into practice some of the principles we were learning. Since I was a single mom with very little money, I was at a loss at what to do. I couldn't go anywhere or do anything with no extra income. So how was I to practice a consciousness of abundance? Well, that week, as I was grocery shopping, when I went down the soap aisle, I found a way to practice abundance. Rather than choosing the cheapest brand of soap, I bought the most expensive bar of, of soap on the shelf. And that silly little step was the beginning of a new way of thinking. I spent a whopping $1.27 more than the cheap soap. But it was the first time that I really felt abundant. I went home and I used it for my shower the next morning affirming that not only could I afford it, but that I was worth it. You know, it would take a long time for me to learn that lesson in other areas of my life. I am a slow learner. But today I do feel that my life is continually blessed and my world is filled with loving people and beautiful things. And today I see that buying and using that expensive bar of soap was the first step on my road of acknowledging my own worthiness. So what are we hoarding, waiting for the right day and right time? Is it the soap in the pretty box? Is it the sheets or set of dishes we are saving for company? Now, if this pandemic has taught us nothing else, it screams at us that life is short, life is precious, and there is no better time to treat ourselves with loving kindness than right here and right now. So if you and I are going to live wholeheartedly, let's honor ourselves. Let's treat ourselves as the company we are waiting for. Use the fancy soap, the best dishes, the prettiest sheets. Not only does it do wonders for our morale, but it puts us back in touch with our own divinity, our own inherent self-worth. Author and shame, and shame researcher Brene Brown says, I believe that owning our worthiness is the act of acknowledging that we are sacred. And I think not only are we sacred, but that all we have and all that we are is sacred too. Our possessions are the gifts that life has given us. Our use of them is our way of saying thank you to life. And I think that's the whole message of using the fancy soap that we stay in the present moment, allowing everything in that moment to be sacred because everything 
including our possessions and ourselves, are manifestations of spirit. And when we recognize the sacred sacredness, rather than the financial worth of our fancy soap, we use it freely with grace and with love. It becomes part of the natural circulation of life giving freely to itself. And that's the true shift in consciousness. What I didn't know that day I walked down the soap aisle and bought the expensive soap was that it was not at all about money. It was about embodying a consciousness of being immersed in a flow of life that always supports us when we give ourselves to it. And that consciousness continues far beyond possessions. Dr. Michael Beckwith in Spiritual Liberation, Fulfilling Your Soul's Purpose, talks about spiritually evolved people. He says these people give thanks for what most people ordinarily take for granted. When we are immersed in that flow, we are grateful for the tiniest of blessings. And we can even see those experiences that are less than wonderful having blessings within them. Even COVID-19 has given us the world of Zoom, something most of us knew little about just five months ago. It has forced us to focus on what truly matters. It has made us slow down and take a look at what we thought was important. Dr. Michael says that spiritually evolved people give without agenda. He says they understand that they live in an opulent universe that seeks instruments through which to give of its unconditional love, compassion, loving kindness, and resources. This is a process of growing out of a mindset of getting something from the world to letting something from within you be freely given. He says that spiritually evolved people experience life as a celebration rather than a problem to be solved. When we see that everything is sacred, we celebrate each thing, each experience. We don't need to figure everything out. It's tiring and it's impossible. When we see our life, all life, as a fascinating mystery to be lived, to be celebrated, then you and I are creating heaven on earth for ourselves and for all those that we touch. So let's use the fancy soap, knowing we are immersed in a divine flow that is always giving and receiving. Let's become spiritually evolved, giving thanks for every blessing and for every blessing in disguise. And let's affirm that no, not only are we instruments through which the universe gives its unconditional love, compassion, loving kindness, and resources, but we are the outlets naturally giving our love, compassion, kindness, and resources, because that is the very truth of who we are. Thank you so much. Namaste. Looking forward, looking back, keeps your heart and mind in lack. A single mind vision sets the heart free. Busy hands, a busy mind, you don't think you have time. But you find that if you close your eyes and breathe, then like a butterfly embracing all its beauty, come a chrysalis of shame, you will awake. Just be still and know that in that present moment, the universe will show you the right road to take. Don't miss your miracle. Don't miss your miracle. It all is possible if you trust and believe that miracles are made by you. Refill yourself with faith and overcome your fears In a conscious unity, if it's to be, it's up to me Everything you need has always been right here And just like a moonbeam dancing on the water Your imagination casts a shining net You were born 
to create and you can't help it. We are all one spirit manifest. Don't miss your miracle. Don't miss your miracle. It all is possible if you trust and believe. Miracles are made by you and me. Don't miss your miracle. Don't miss your miracle. It all is possible if you trust and believe that miracles are made by you and me. That miracles are made by you and me That miracles are made by you and me Thank you, Heather, and thank you for joining us today. We would like to continue our messages with you and would greatly appreciate your financial support. Please visit our website, cslaz.org, and click on the donate button. And we truly thank you for your consideration. And now I turn our service over to Ruth for our closing affirmative prayer. Again, I thank you for being with us today. All of us, Reverend Donna, your practitioners, and Heather, are grateful to be of service to you. If you need prayer support, Please contact one of us, and we will pray, provide a treatment for you. If you would like to set up a practitioner session, please let us know. So as the service concludes, we know and accept that God is all in all. There is nothing that is not of God and we are the reflection of that wholeness and perfection of God. Today we hold a special place in our hearts for those who need some extra support. We know that God is in us and works through us and expresses as us every day. My gratitude fills me for the opportunity to know these truths for all of us. I am thankful for all of you watching. And I know that this high and holy position for your practitioners, for your ecclesiastical team benefits us all. And our release into the law, into the infinite universe, into that creative medium, anything holding us back from receiving our perfect good. As we know that this law works, we are open to receive, and so it is. Thank you.